Sony just revealed the PlayStation 5 which everyone is happy about including me even though I'm able to get it 2 years later. So I decided to do what a fan will do, not that. I decided to create an app for the PlayStation 5 even though no one's ever gonna use it. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how I build this app using Flutter. If you are new here, please consider subscribing, turn on notifications and you'll find time upload a new video. And that's what I do, let's start coding. Before I continue, I'd like to point out that the UI was gotten from Triple. Triple is a website where users upload design. So if you need an inspiration to design your website or app, you can visit Triple.com. Before we start coding, let's take a look at our app. So over here, we have a button navigation bar which is holding some buttons with morphic effect. If you don't know what morphic design is, it's a UI design that uses light source and shadow to create soft 3D effect, giving it focus to your element. To create a morphic design is pretty easy using the box shadow. At the top of the app, we have a header with a morphic button and a logo. And also over here, we have a product card with a morphic effect, which has the product image, type, and name. And once we click on it, it's going to take us to a new screen with the product image, the features, and a button of buy now, and a price beside the text of buy now. And once we click on the back arrow button, it's going to take us to the home page. And if we click on under product, it's going to take us to the product screen with a new product. And that's all for the preview. Let's jump right into the code. We'll start by creating a project using a command and we'll pass in the project name. Then we clean the main.dat file by getting rid of the code we don't need. Next, we change the title of the app to PS5 Store. Then we get rid of the My Home page widget and replace the home with a container widget to avoid errors. Next, we create the asset folder to hold the asset for the project. Then we open the box.yml file to add the asset folder. Then inside the leaf folder, we create a screen folder for the screen, a model folder for the model, widgets folder for the widgets, and a style folder for the styles. Inside the style folder, we are going to create a file called my colors, which is going to hold the colors for the app. Inside the file, we import material and create a class called my color. Next, we create some variables to hold the colors: the light color, dark color, blue color, and dark blue color. Inside the screen folder, we are going to create a file called home screen for the home widget. We create a stateful widget for the home screen. Then we import material to get rid of the error. Inside the main dot that we replace the container widget with the home screen widget we just created. In our home screen widget, we are going to get rid of the container widget and replace it with a scaffold widget. Then we change the background of the scaffold to a light color. And right now we have our app with a light background. Next, we add a button navigation bar to our scaffold. I initially wanted to use the button navigation bar widget, but I wasn't able to customize it to my taste. So we are going to create a custom widget for the button navigation bar. Note, if you are going to follow this process, you have to manage the state and the page by yourself. We create a widget called bottom nav for the bottom navigation, which is going to return a container. We give it a color of my color dot dark and a height of 80 pixels. And now we have the bottom navigation bar. Next, we give it a round shape by setting the top left border radius to 35 pixels and top right border radius to 35 pixels. And now we have the bottom navigation bar with the curve shape. Next, we give it a child of row widget which is going to hold the icon buttons. Since we make use of the icon button in various parts of the app, we are going to create a standalone widget for the button which we will be able to use in different parts of the app. In the widget folder, we create a file called Nomorphic Buttons. Inside the file, we import material and create a class called Buttons. Inside the class, we create a method called Icon Button, which is going to take in four arguments, which are the BG color, icon, box shadow, and size. Next, we return the container. We give it a height of the size, the width of the size, and the color of the BG color. And we give it a border radius of 7.0. Then we'll give it a box shadow. Next, we open the home screen and import the nemorphic button. Inside the row widget, we add the icon button by instantiating the button class and calling the method icon button. We then pass in a dark color for the beachy color and an icon widget for the icon. We give the icon widget a color of white. We pass in the box shadow. But since we'll be adding the morphic effect to the other widgets in the app, we're going to create a file for the box shadow so that we'll be able to make use of it in other parts of the app. Inside the widget folder, we are going to create a file called shadow.dat. And inside the file, we are going to import material and create a class called shadow. Inside the class, we are going to create a method called nomorphic, which is going to return a list and a type of box shadow. The method is going to take in some arguments, the dark color and the light color. 
which is going to return a list of box shadows. First box shadow is going to have a color of that color, a border radius of 5 pixels, an offset of 2 pixels for both X and Y axis. While the second box shadow is going to have a color of light color, a blur radius of 5 pixels and an offset of minus 2 pixels for both X and Y axis. This is going to create an amorphic effect and that's all for this file. Next, inside the home screen, we are going to import the box shadow. Inside the icon button, we are going to pass in the box shadow by instantiating the shadow class and calling the method morphic. Then we'll pass in a black color with an opacity of 0.5 for the dark color. And we'll pass in a gray color with an opacity of 0.1 for the light color. Then we'll give it a size of 40.0. And right now we have our anamorphic button. Oops, we forgot to add the child of the icon to our icon button. We open the anamorphic button widget and give it the child of the icon. And now we have the icon button with the icon showing up. Next, we duplicate the icon button and change the icon to the corresponding icon. And now we have the four icon buttons. Then we space the button by giving the row a main axis alignment evenly. And now we have the button space evenly. And that's all for the button navigation bar. Next, we are going to start working on the header of the app. But before we start working on the header, we are going to remove the debug banner. Sorry, we should have done that earlier. Inside the main.dat file in the material widget, we pass in a property called debug show check mode banner and set it to false. This will get rid of the debug banner. Then we'll open the home page widget and set the body of the scaffold to a safe area widget. Inside the widget, we give it the child of colon widget. It's going to hold the header and the products for the home screen. The app bar does not give us much room for customization, so we are going to create the header widget for the header of the app. Inside the widget folder, we are going to create a file called header.dat. Then inside the file, we create a state level widget for the header, which will return a container widget. We create some variable, leading button for the left button, action button for the right button, the logo for the logo, and the BG for the background color of the header. We set the variables to the value passed through the constructor. Inside the container, we give the color of the BG color, a horizontal pattern of 20 pixels and a height of 20 pixels. And give the child of a row widget, which is going to hold the leading button, the logo and the action button. Then space the item by giving the main axis alignment or space between. Inside the home screen widget, we import the header widget. Then we pass in the header widget. We pass in the icon button widget for the leading button and the action button. Then we pass in the logo. It's the PS5 logo in the asset folder. And we give it a width of 120 pixels. And lastly, we pass in the light color for the BG color. We hit save and now we have our header with the buttons and the PS5 logo. Next, we start adding the product to the home page. Well, before we do that, we are going to create a model for the product which is going to describe how our product is going to look like. Inside the model folder, we are going to create a file called product. Inside the file, we are going to create a class called product. Then we'll add some variable to the class, the image for the image product, name for the name, type for the type, and price for the price of the product. Then we'll set the variables to the value we pass through the constructor. And that's all for the product model. Since this is not a real world project, we are just going to hard code the product. Create a variable called the product list, which is going to hold the product. Now adding some product to the list with some hard coded value using the model. Next, we create a widget called product, which is going to hold the product card. Inside the file, we are going to create a stateful widget called product. Then we import material and also we import the product model. We replace the container with an expanded widget to fill the many space of the screen. We then give the widget a child of list view to hold the product. And inside the list view, we are going to pass it a row widget to hold each row for the product. Note, you can easily achieve this using the grid view builder, which there will be no need for the list view and the row widget. Next, we create a widget for the product card. Inside the widget folder, we are going to create a file called product card. Inside the file, we are going to create a state widget for the product card, which is going to return a container. Then we import materials and also we import the product model. Then create a variable called product, which is going to be a type of product. Set the product to the value passed in through the constructor. Inside the container widget, we are going to give it a height of 250 pixels. Then we'll give it a width of half of the screen minus 40 pixels. To do that, we we'll use the media query to get the width of the size. Then we we'll divide it by 2 and subtract 40 from it. Next, we we'll give it a horizontal margin of 10 pixels and a vertical margin of 15 pixels. Then we we'll give it a padding of 15 pixels. We'll give the container a light color, a border radius of 10.0. Then we we'll give it a box shadow. Since our card is going to have an amorphic effect, we are going to make use of our shadow class. We we'll instantiate the class and call the method morphic. Pass in a gray color with an opacity of 4 for the dark color, white color with an opacity of 1 for the light color. This will create an amorphic effect for the card. Container a child of colon widget to hold the details for the card. At the colon widget, we add an icon for the favorite icon and we give it a size of 15 pixels. 
Put the icon widget, we're going to add an image widget, which is going to be an asset image. Then we'll pass in the link of the image using the product object. We keep the height of 150 pixels. Then we'll center the image widget by wrapping it inside the center widget. Next, we add the size box widget with the height of 5.0 for spacing. We'll add the text widget for the product type and we'll give it a size of 5.0. Below the test widget, we add the size box for spacing. We'll add on that test widget for the product name with the font size of 14.0 and give the color of blue, the font weight of bold. We'll open the product widget and inside the raw widget, we add the product card and we'll pass in the product list and the index of 0 for the first product. We we'll duplicate this and change the index to 1 for the second product. We'll give the product card some spacing by giving the row a main axis alignment or space evenly. Next, we duplicate the row widget for the second row. We change the index to 2 for the top product and index to 3 for the fourth product. And now to display the product, I want to open the home screen and add the product below the header widget. Now have the product in the home screen. But we have the icon and the text center on the card, which we want to be at the left. To fix this, we are going to open the product card widget. And inside the column widget, we are going to set the cross as this alignment to start. And now we have the icon and the text at the left side of the card. Next, we create the product screen for the product details. Create a file called product screen. And inside the file, we are going to create the product screen widget, which is going to be a stateless widget. Then we import material and replace the container widget with the material app widget. We get rid of the debug banner and set the home to a scaffold widget. Since we want to be able to navigate to the product screen, once we click on the product card, we are going to make use of the gesture detector widget. Inside the product card widget, we are going to wrap it to the gesture detector widget. And we are going to add on tap, which is going to fire once we click on the product card. Inside the on tap, we are going to navigate to the product screen using the navigator.push and passing the screen which is the product screen and passing the current product. Next, inside the product screen we are going to create a variable called data to hold the product pass in which is going to be a type of product. Then we we'll set it to the value passing through the constructor. And now if we click on the product card, it's going to take us to the product screen with a white background. Next, we give the scaffold a dark color for the background color and give it a body of a safe area widget. And inside the safe area widget, we give it a child of a column widget which is going to hold the header and the body of the page. Then inside the column widget, we are going to pass in a header widget. Then we'll pass in an icon button for the leading and the action button. And we'll pass an image widget for the PS5 logo with a width of 120 pixels and also give it a BG color of a dark color. And now we have the header of the app. And since we want to be able to go back to the home screen once we click on the back arrow button widget, we're going to wrap the icon widget in a gesture widget. And inside the on tap, we are going to use the navigator.pop to take us back to the previous screen. And now if we click on the back button, it's going to take us back to the home page. Next, we create a body widget for the body which is going to take in the context and it's going to hold the product image, the features and the buy now button. Inside the widget, we are going to return the container and give the height of a variable called body height which we are going to create. We create a variable called body height and to get the body height, we are going to get the full height of the screen then subtract it from padding and 65 pixels which was the height of the header. We are going to create a variable called padding for the padding and to get the padding, we are going to subtract the top padding from the bottom padding. Next, we give the container a child of single child scroll view because we want to be able to scroll if the items overflow. Inside the widget, we are going to give it a child of container widget, a top margin of 30 pixels and a top padding. We'll give it a light color for the color. Then we we'll give the container a child of a column widget which is going to hold the image, the features and the buy now button. Next, we add an image widget for the product image which is going to be an asset image. Then we'll pass in the image link from the data object. Then we'll give it a height of 220 pixels. Then below the image widget, we are going to add a size box widget and give the height of 10 pixels for spacing. Then we'll add an image widget for the ring image which is located in the asset folder. Then we'll give it the height of 60 pixels. Next, we are going to create a features widget for the features of the product. Inside the widget, we are going to return a container. We we'll give it a vertical padding of 25 pixels and a height of 120 pixels. Next, we we'll give the container a child of list view to hold the list of the features card. Next, we we'll give the list view a scroll direction of axis or horizontal to scroll the features card horizontally. Then inside the list view, we are going to add a container for the features card and give it a width of 100 pixels, a horizontal padding of 10.0 and a vertical padding of 15.0. Next, we we'll give it a horizontal margin of 12.0 and a vertical margin of 10.0. Then we'll give it a light color for the color and also the card is going to have an amorphic effect so we are going to add a box shadow and give it our custom shadow then we'll give it a border radius of 20.0 for the curve shape next we are going to give the container a column widget which is going to hold the icon of the features and the details of the features inside the column widget we are going to pass an icon widget for the icon and we'll give it an icon type of mic and a color of blue for the color Below the icon widget, we are going to add a text widget for the features details, then we'll pass in the features and we'll give it a font width of bold. And now we have the features card. Next, we are going to align the items at the left side of the card and also add some spacing between the items. To do that, we are going to set the cross axis alignment to start and also set the main axis alignment to space evenly. And now we have the items at the left side of the app and some space between. 
Next, we duplicate the features card and change the icons to its corresponding icons and also change the details. And now we have the features of the product. Next, we are going to create a widget for the buy button. And inside the widget, we are going to return the container. We give the height of 55 pixels, then we give the left margin of 20 pixels, a right margin of 20 pixels, and a bottom margin of 20 pixels. Then we give the border of 30 pixels for the round shape, a color of blue, and also we give the demorphic shadow. And next, we give the container a child of a row widget, which is going to hold the price and the buy now text. We give the row widget a main axis alignment or space between. Inside the row widget, we are going to add a container for the price. We give the width of 80 pixels and a height of 55 pixels. Then we give the dark blue color and the border radius of 30 pixels. And we give the a child of text widget for the price and passing the price from the data object. Then give the text a color of white and a font width of bold. We'll wrap the text widget inside the center widget to center the text. And now we have the price showing up. Next, we are going to add an expander widget to fill many space and we'll give the child of text widget. Then we we'll give the text widget a text of buy now, a color of white, a font width of bold, and a font size. Then we we'll center the text by wrapping it inside the center widget. And now we have the buy now button. But if you take a look at our app, we have the dark color of the scaffold showing. That is because the body widget is not filling the remaining height of the screen. To fix this, you are going to wrap the column widget with a constraint boss widget and give it a mean height of the body height minus 80 pixels. The 80 pixels is the addition of the 30 pixels of the top margin of the container and 50 pixels for the top padding of the container. And now we have the container filling the screen. Next, we add the curve shape to the container. Inside the container, wrapping the constraint boss widget, we are going to add a top left radius of 40 pixels and a top right radius of 40 pixels. And now we have the curve shape. And that's all, guys. If you find the video helpful, please like and share. And also, if not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Turn on the notifications so you're notified when I upload a new video. And I'll see you in the next video.